All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. So my name is Keja Carter. I am the organizer of EIN, and I'm super excited for having a great speaker for today, Jerry Foster. So Jerry will discuss branding big for sales mastery. But before he comes to our virtual stage to give his talk, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of what EIN offers. So first and foremost, EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, so the talk and networking session during our Q and A's and gratitude circle, where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And uh, to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs International Network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. I will put them down in the chat box right now so that you can uh, see them. There you go. Right. And if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, which I also included in the chat box below, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you'll be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and you can register there. So we highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for an hour and a half and we'll have our speaker give his talk for 45 minutes. After that, we'll have a 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience to share their take and we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. Then after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 1030 a.m. Pacific. And with that, let's go to our great speaker today, Jerry Foster. Jerry Foster is a highly accomplished brand strategist with 30 years of successful experience. He is the creator of the Big Brand Formula, which shows small business owners how to create a big brand and a strong message that sells. So you can uh, excite, delight, and ignite your market and make it easier to get new customers. And so I'm so excited, excitedly big, to have uh, Jerry on our stage to share with us his talk and how we can benefit from it in our business. So Jerry, I'm giving you all the stage. Ah, oh, thank you so much. It's great to be here. And uh, are my slides up? Can you see them? Yes. Pretty clear. All right, very good. So to topic, the topic today is branding big for sales mastery, which is a topic that's dear and important to me because this is all about the brand called you. And my sweet spot, just so you know, is how to big brand expertise, service-based entrepreneurs like yourself, especially, especially if you're a coach or a consultant or a speaker. There's a certain way that you have to go about branding yourself as a personal brand, which is very different than how you brand a product. So let's just sort of set the stage here and cover some basic facts about this whole thing called branding. And I always tell business owners all the time, especially those who are service providers of any sort, that branding is the foundational piece for acquiring your ideal premium ready to buy now clients, because it's all about your brand and your brand is how you are showing up in the market. Not, not just visually, but in terms of, are you really being looked upon as being preeminent in your space? Are you looked upon as being someone who is distinct, who offers certain advantages over and above other options? And that's key because there are a lot of branding myths that are out there. Now, there, there's five types of brands. Before I get into this slide, there's 
basically five types of brands. And I don't want to make any kind of assumptions about what any of you know or don't know about branding. But the first type of brand is what's called a corporate brand. And of course, we're all familiar with who the corporations are. Think Pepsi, think Apple, think McDonald's, right? And then the second kind of brand are your product brands. So Pepsi-Cola, for example, might have a brand called Dr. Pepper and McDonald's has Big Back and everything else. And Apple has I this, I that. And then the third kind of brand are what are called service brands. And these are companies that are branding their services around the particular type of mode of service. So think Vistaprint, think Stanley Steamer, Stanley Steamer carpet cleaner. And then the fourth kind of brand are nonprofits. And I tell people all the time, make no mistake about it, American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, United Way, those are brands. And the only difference is that they're looking for donations <laughs> instead of paying customers. And then of course, the fifth kind of brand, which is the focus of my talk today, are what are called personal brands, where you, where you are branding yourself around your God-given name. Think Dr. Phil, Dr. Roz, Oprah, Susie Ornan, Rachel Ray, Kim Kardashian, if you want, if you want to throw her, her in there as well. So when it comes to this whole thing of personal branding, for those of you who are solopreneurs, the first myth is to understand that believing that your aesthetics, that your logo, your website, or how you are using photography and colors and how you are appearing on social media or anything else that's visual is sufficient when it comes to branding, that is a myth. No one's going to hire anyone just because of how you look, how you come across visually. And one of the examples that I love to use for this is let's take Coke and Pepsi. I doubt the Coca-Cola drinkers prefer Coke because it's in a red can and the Pepsi people because it's in a blue can. It's what's inside the can that counts. So you want to get beyond the idea that your logo or your website or anything that people can see is sufficient to getting people to do business with you, all right? Because just because you may come across a certain way visually, you're not giving people a valid reason to choose you. And so when you think of it from that standpoint, if you are simply focused on, let's say, uh, how you come across in social media, and I'll even, I'll even throw into this thinking that your story is your brand or your use of any kind of promotional items such as t-shirts and baseball caps with your logo on them or, or some kind of expression or believing that your uh, ability to stand out through your particular message is your brand. No, 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 there's a lot of, there's a lot of moving pieces that comprise what's called a first class uh, best in class, world class personal brand, which I'll be getting into. The second myth is believing that having the right message, the right sales funnel, the right offer, the right program, a big list, perhaps host a challenge is all you really need. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't it be great if it were that simple? That all you need to succeed is, is an offer, a website, excuse me, an offer or a, a message and a landing page. And the thing that people have to remember is that today's buyer, the people that you are targeting, they're much more discerning. They're much more sophisticated. They're very savvy. And so they're, they're, they're not falling for those types of things anymore. So you want to make sure that you have, write this down, what's called a whole brand as opposed to a partial brand which means that you have to nail down your brand first, then focus on how to market and sell your brand. Because the most successful companies in America, and it's well documented, are the ones who market and, and offer and sell brands, not just products or services. 
because the job of the brand is to make sure that you get known so that marketing can get you found and selling can get you paid. And so if your goal is to get known, get found and get paid, if all you're focusing on are the marketing components, then you're missing the boat. And then the third myth that you see here is believing that branding is not that important, that it's more of a nice to have, not a must have. See, again, the most successful companies put out brands because if all you're putting out is a product or a service, then you are, you're, you're, you're running the risk of blending in and not standing out. And if you go back to what I was just saying a minute ago, that the job of branding is to get you known, so marketing can get you found and get you, and selling can get you paid, then you must do everything that you can to not only be seen, be heard, and be heard so you can make money, you have to give people a compelling reason to work with you, especially when you're offering services of any sort. So write this down. The key is to position yourself as being preeminent at what it is that you do so that you do stand out above the rest of the crowd in your area of expertise. Now, are all of these things important? Of course they are. In no way am I minimizing the importance of your aesthetics, your logo, your website. No way am I minimizing marketing. I'm a big believer in marketing, okay? Because you've got to have a smart, strong marketing, right? I mean, you have to have all of those. However, if you're going to have strong marketing, it has to be connected with what? Compelling branding so that the branding and the marketing mesh together so that selling can become a lot easier for you. So you really have to sort of look upon the whole idea of branding, marketing, and selling as a three-legged stool. All three legs have to be in place. If one leg is missing, if one leg is wobbly, you're in trouble. But it also suggests that one leg is not more important than the other. In no way, no way, shape, or form is branding more important than marketing. Absolutely not. And marketing is not important than selling. Absolutely not. Selling is not more important than branding. They're equally important. But the three have to work together. They have to, they have to be integrated a certain way. And so if you think about it, if someone thinks that, oh, well, Jerry, all I need to do is knock on more doors and get more appointments and sell, sell, sell. Oh, my God, you're missing the boat. Or if somebody thinks that, no, Jerry, what I need to do is focus on my marketing because marketing is a holy grail. Oh, my God, you're missing the boat there. The same thing with branding. You've got to do all three in order to be effective. So the question for today's presentation the first question is, are you ready to amplify your uniqueness? Now, notice the words that I'm going to be putting in gold here. Uniqueness. I just mentioned a few, a few minutes ago about how you have to stand out and not blend in. Another way to think about this is that unless you're distinct, you risk being extinct. And in today's business environment, where more and more people are competing online. When you think about the zillions, it seems, of websites and social networks that are out there, unless you really are distinguishing yourself as being preeminent in what it is that you do for a living, then you're just going to fade into the background. And so you, and, and this is a, and this is a, a branding issue, not a marketing issue. You have to nail down what is going to be your brand identity from the standpoint of not the not just the visual stuff, but more importantly, why should people work with you so that they feel they can get something from you that they cannot get anywhere else? And the second question is, do you want to stand out and get noticed? I really believe. And by the way, I'm what's called a brand strategist as opposed to a brand designer because there's a lot of layers to branding. As I've been kind of alluding to, you have some people who do brand design. You have some people who do branded websites. You have some people who do social media branding, promotional products, brand archetypes, uh, and on and on and on, right? I'm what's called a strategist. So, uh, you know, uh, my, my job is to make sure that you stand out, get noticed, and are remembered for offering something unique so that you can then be rewarded for your individuality. And so when you break it down that way, you have to stand out, you have to get noticed, 
and you have to be remembered. But no one's going to remember you if you were putting something out into the marketplace, especially as a service, any kind of skill, talent, or ability that you offer that is not separating you from others in your space, in your industry, in your field of expertise. And the third question that you have to ask yourself is, is it time to magnify your impact through your personal brand? I mean, right now it's what? It's October, what is it? October 2nd, 3rd, what, what day is it? Anyway, but this is, this is the fourth quarter of the year in 2023. This is the time that you start jumpstarting uh, 2024. This is the fourth quarter of the year. This is the year, this is the time of year, I should say, that businesses focus on planning and getting ready to not only end the, the, the current year strong, but to jumpstart 2024. And so you have to make the decision today that you want to magnify your impact. Now, my work is about big branding, but you decide what big means to you. Is it impact? Is it about having more influence? Is it about making more money? Is it attracting certain types of clients? I mean, Big is however you define it, but I tell you this, you have to magnify what it is that you're going to do through your brand so that when you feed it to your marketing machinery, then your marketing can do what it needs to do so that you can then go out, connect with more potential clients and close more sales. So when you think about that sequence, brand, market, sell, get known, get found, get paid. The whole thing is about sequencing. And, and, and my point here is, is that you don't put the tile down before the cabins are up. I mean, I, listen, I've been in this field for over 30 plus years. I've made branding my life's work. It's the only thing that I've been doing since I came out of college, okay? I started my brand development and training company full-time in 1985. This is my 38th year. Yes, I was 10 years old when I started, uh, okay? All right, I had a lemonade stand, by the way. Jesus was wearing sandals and dinosaurs were roaming the earth. But my point is this, in my 30 plus years of doing this work, the only work that I've done, I cannot tell you how many service-based entrepreneurs, especially, not to mention small business owners in general, are out of sequence. They're doing things in the wrong in the in the wrong order. They want to hurry up and 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 close sales. They they want to hurry up and get some kind of marketing gimmick or uh, you know create a lead generation funnel or do something to get to get clients. But wait a minute, make sure that you have the branding and the marketing and the selling all in order in that sequence. So when someone comes along and says to me, oh my goodness, Jerry, I've got a brand so I can focus on my marketing. Really, what's your brand? Well, Jerry, I got a logo. Jerry, I got a website. Jerry, don't you love my colors? What's the problem? Oh my God, you know, it's like, it's, it's this, there's this, this crazy, it's, it's even beyond a myth. It's like people are going bananas here. They don't understand that you don't put the tile down before the cabinets are up. You don't put up the drywall until you install the plumbing first. So just keep that in mind. Here's another way to think of it. Make sure that your brand architecture is in place, meaning that you want to have the strongest foundation possible so that your brand has the strongest body, voice, and spirit possible. Now, the technical term for that is what's called your brand strategy, and that becomes your, your branding blueprint that you build out to build out from. And then once that work is done, then you go to phase two. And now you feed that branding blueprint to who? Your marketing team so that they can work their magic. No different than building a house. You start with a brand architect. And if you call, if you need to call me something else, call me a brand architect, right? And then when you get to phase two, you're going to build, you're going to build it out creatively. In home construction, you're going to build out, you're going to build the house, right? I mean, the, the blueprint goes to the builder, the builder brings in the plumber, the electricians, the carpenters, and the rest of the crew to build a house. It's the same kind of sequence in my world. In phase two, my version of the construction crew would be the marketing team. 
someone to come in and put together your lead generation. Maybe you want to do a challenge. Maybe you want to create your offer. Maybe you want to do some kind of online marketing, whatever your digital marketing strategy is going to be and on and on and on. I work with these people all the time, right? So now the marketing team are, are now connected with the branding and the brand and the marketing come together. So you have what's called brand synergy. Okay, so you move from brand creation, brand architecture to brand building, build it out creatively, brand, phase three, implementation, get out there, bless people, benefit your clients, have impact, make money, phase four, uh, manage your success. So the sequence is create, build, launch, maintain, create, build, launch, maintain. I preach that all the time, create the strongest brand possible, build it out creatively with the right marketing team, get it out there, have impact and then manage your success. It's all about sequencing. It's all about prioritization. That is like the anthem of the most successful businesses in America, regardless of their size, because when you do things in the right order, it's designed to help solidify and impact the lifeblood of any business in America, regardless of your size, if you're a solopreneur all the way up to multi-billion dollar companies, and that is called what? What's your lifeblood? It's called your cash flow, your revenues, your profits. So you just have to decide, do you want to put out a brand or do you want to put out services and on and on and on? Because if you just want to show up as a service provider, I'm not your guy. I work with people who want to stand out. So let me give you what I call some big brand secrets here uh, that I think can really make a difference for you. Secret number one that you see on the screen is think like an ideal client. There's an old adage in branding. Think the way the customer thinks, not the way you think, which means stand in their shoes, see things from their perspective. And the second branding adage is you never create a new conversation. You enter to the conversation that's already inside of someone's head. Now, if you stand in the shoes of your ideal client, and again, you define what ideal means to you. Typically, it's your perfect fit client. It's your premium client. It's the one who's going to pay the fees that you want them to pay. And they're ready to work with you now. It's been shown in branding that people don't buy products or services. They don't really buy brand names per se. What brands, what brands, uh, what people really buy are what those brands can do for them. So from the client's perspective, the first thing they want to know is, well, what makes you unique? What sets you apart from other options they're considering? Which means they really want to know what do you offer over and above other alternatives? And if you cannot articulate what those advantages and differences are, then you're dead in the water. The second thing they want to know is what are you really known for? What are people associating with your brand name? See, one of the reasons why the Wall Street Journal and other leading organizations has said that branding is the number one business building tool for the most successful companies in America, if not worldwide, is because of one thing. You are able to shape perceptions of your buyer, your ideal client. You get to control the narrative. Think about that for a second. And when we buy brands in this brand conscious world that we live in, the reason why as consumers we love our brands is because we know what we're going to get from that brand, right? There's no mystery about what it's going to taste like if we go into McDonald's. What's it going to be like if we walk into Starbucks? You could, you could start taking any well-known brand name, products or services, and you know exactly what you're going to get. But it starts with those brands nailing down what they want to be known for. So, for example, Crest doesn't sell toothpaste. What they sell is unleashing healthy, beautiful smiles. The Airbnb guys, it, it, it was, uh, it, it was, it's been said to them, how did you guys create this multi-million dollar business in such a short, a short period of time, showing people how to rent out their homes? And they said, we're not in the home rental business. We're in the business of people belonging anywhere. 
Uh, Nike doesn't sell greatness. They finally made a movie about it. Excuse me, Mikey, excuse me. Nike doesn't sell sneakers. What they sell is greatness. And they finally made a movie about it, right? Called Air. I haven't seen the movie, but it's, it's the whole thing about when Phil and I got Michael Jordan to sign with them and created a pair of shoes for the guy called Air Jordan. And it's the number one, it's still the number one selling sneaker in the world. Why is that? Because what the Nike brand stands for, especially Air Jordan, is greatness. Are you, are you getting me here? DollarShakeClub.com Club, guy. His brand was, we get your, you know, we deliver high quality razor blades to your front door for a few bucks a month. Sold the brand for like $5 billion in five years. I mean, I can go on on and on and on here, but you got to ask yourself, what do you stand for? So if I come across your website, for example, at the top of it, am I going to hear what you are? Or am I, am I going to see what you are? Or am I going to see what it is that you do? Hmm. Interesting, right? Oprah, how did you do it? She says, well, I didn't market a talk show. My brand was Ladies Lead Your Fulfilled Life. You following me? And then number three, what is going to be your brand promise? Because a brand is a promise. It's the promise of an experience. An experience that they're going to receive from you that they cannot get anywhere else. I love the famous story of Walt Disney when in the early 50s or the late 40s or something, he and his wife are sitting on, a, sitting on a bench in an amusement park and he turns to his wife and says, I'm going to start my own amusement park one day. And his wife says, why would you do that? They're loud, they're dirty, they, and, and the employees are, are, are rude. Why would you want to do that? And he says, exactly. My amusement park won't be like that. And so what do we think of when we think, what do we think of when we say Disneyland? What do we associate with it? With it? What, if, what do they promise? The happiest place on earth. Now I could go deeper on this topic, but I just want you to know that at the end of the day, what people want to hear from you is what are you promising to them? They don't want to hear simply what the services are. They want to know what's in it for them. Not in a sentence, something juicy. It's usually about two or three paragraphs, the kind of promises that I write for service providers, right? Who typically are professionals and whatnot, like yourself, perhaps. And then number four, what's going to be your message? So if I were to go to your website, if I was to look at anything that you're putting out there, are you, are you coming across as dry and boring? Or are you coming across as someone who does what? Entices connects and engages through the words, the right words that speak to the heart and not the head. And there's a lot of boring, poor copywriting and messages for a lot of products and services in general that are out there. So they want to know those four things, right? And then on top of that, what they really want to know is, okay, don't tell me what your services are. Tell me what your services can do for me. Number one, are you going to solve a problem that I have? Can you get rid of this painful, annoying problem that's bothering me, plaguing my company, my teams, my family, whatever? Can you make it go away? Number two, can you provide some kind of, you know, can, can, you, can you provide me a better outcome? If I work with you, if I engage your services, can you take me from where I am to where I want to be? So what I really need to know are the advantages that you offer over and above other alternatives, things that I'm presently doing, thinking of doing, have tried in the past, and here's the worst, what others think, what others tell me that they think I should do. Or number three, can you perform some kind of miracle in my life? Now, this is for those of you who come across people who are in a real dire situation. And what they really want to know from you is what? Can you, can you reverse their situation? Can you turn their midnight into day? Can you make the seemingly impossible possible for them? So that they're no longer limited by their past or their present mindset. Are you with me? Now, in my world, we call that miracle branding. And miracle branding, there, uh, you know, sometimes these great brands sell the fantasy of it all, you know, uh, lose 20 pounds in 20 days without going hungry. Woo, you know, get rid of belly fat in 10 days. Woo, get, get, uh, we'll get rid of your migraine headache in five minutes. Woo, right? I mean, this, 
Yo, get, get, here's one. <laughs> I should use this one. Got, guys, use the app machine. Yeah, but in 30 days, you can sit on your couch, use use the app machine, you'll have a six pack, right? That's a miracle, right? But you get my idea, my point here, right? The basic idea is the premise of what's possible for someone. And then the fourth thing they offer, excuse me, that they pay for is what emotional payoff do you provide? How are you going to make them feel if they work with you? Can you eliminate, for example, any negative emotion that they're dealing with? Nobody wants to feel frustrated. Nobody wants to feel stressed out. Nobody wants to feel worried. I mean, there's all types of negative emotions, right? That as human beings, we experience that we want to make go away. When, just so you know, I'm an, I'm an xp and guy. I worked in branding at Procter & Gamble. Now, if you don't know anything about Procter & Gamble, P&G, they wrote the book on branding, right? So they're the, they're the number one branding company on the planet and have been for God knows how long. So when I worked in big branding at P&G as a brand strategist, helping to grow some of their laundry brands, one of the brands that I used to co-manage is, is a little brand that maybe some of you have heard of called Cascade Detergent. Oh, yeah, Cascade Detergent. And when I used to co-manage Cascade, me and my team, we came up with this campaign. We would have someone reach into a dishwasher, pull out a glass, hold it up to a light source and go, oh, my God, spots. I can't put these glasses out. My mom will be here in, in 15 minutes. Company is going to be here in 45 minutes. What do I do? What do I do? And, and then we said, well, you should have used Cascade. Because Cascade would get, you, get your dishes virtually spotless. Anyway, but here's my point. We did research. And the research showed that what drove, watch this, write this, these words down, what drove customer engagement, because each of you has to activate engagement, right, with your target audience, was that nobody wanted to feel embarrassed by how their dishes look coming out of the dishwasher. And so we created a branding campaign called No Embarrassing Moments, which drove the sales of Cascade out of the roof. So I want you to each think about, yeah, Jerry is saying, don't offer services, don't sell services, sell what your service is, your expertise, skills, talents, and abilities, your gifts to the world would do for somebody. And all they want to know is, are you going to solve a problem, improve outcomes, perform some kind of a miracle, or provide some kind of emotional payoff to them? Because you got to tie a ribbon around this, right? Name it, claim it, grab it. Uh, 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 blab it and grab it and be in it and walk in it, which means you got to sell the sizzle, not the steak. Because in branding, it's all about selling the bubbles and not the champagne a lot of times, or with the coffee, not the coffee. Which gets into point number two, which is where's your gap? Now, I want to kind of tie this in with point number one. Great brands fill what are called gaps, which means to plant your flag, stake your claim in market space that nobody else is occupying. Now, why is that important? It's important because, listen, you're not selling a product. You're not selling a tangible item. Think about it. When we buy something that's tangible, we have the opportunity to do what? See, taste, touch, smell, or hear the product in advance before we even have to pay for anything. We can take the kids, go into the pet shop, play with the puppy. Before the pandemic, we could go on to Trader Joe's and try the food samples. We get to do what it is that we need to do to test drive or try out that product. When you are in the business like each of you are with your personal brands, offering services, skills, talents, abilities, gifts, and uniqueness, and all of that that we've been talking about, in the eyes of your buyer, you're selling vapor. You're selling the invisible. And you can't say to that person, well, trust me, I'm good at what I do, or trust me because look at my resume, or trust me because I've got all the trainings and certifications and experience. And, oh, did I tell you about my wonderful education? Nobody cares about that. All people want to know is how are you different and why are you, and, and why are you better? So you have to position yourself as being what's called a me-only brand, not me too or me also. You want to be able to say that you are the only hama hama that can do hama hama. So in order to provide what's called unrivaled value, watch me, stay, stay with me on this. In order for you to put out something that people can hug, 
can hug because that's my goal for each of you. I want people to be able to hug your unrivaled value. I want people to feel that they can get something from you and only from you. So this is where you got to start asking yourself strategically. Okay. Jerry says, where's the gap in the marketplace? Find, find my gap. Jerry says that people want to buy what you're standing for, who you are, not what it is that you do. So how do you do that? The way you do that is by scratching people where they itch. Now you won't learn that <laughs> anywhere else. <laughs> but if you scratch people where they itch, what it means is to stake your claim, to plant your flag around, around something as an idea. This is called your big brand concept. Now, remember, I to, by the way, I was an adjunct professor of branding, marketing, and advertising for 10 straight years at four universities, okay? Weekends and evenings. I live and breathe branding. I've made branding my life's work. Okay. I mean, this is so you so, you, so bear with me here. I'm kind of a nerd. Okay. They should call me nerdy Jerry. I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd when it comes to branding. So this is all strategic here because great brands are building the trenches strategically, not visually. Okay. So here's the thing. So what we do is we find the gap. We find, we find where they itch. All right. So ask yourself, read the slide. I want you each to think of your ideal clients. The ones that you would love to have more of as you're gearing up for 2024, as you're looking at, to close a year strong, I want you to ask yourself, when it comes to my ideal clients, the ones that I want to attract, what are they sick and tired of putting up with? What's not working that they want to have work better? What would they like to change for the better? Scratch people where they itch. <laughs> I know we don't have a lot. I used to work with a guy in P&G. His name was Dean. Okay. Dean worked in the cubicle behind me. He was the brand manager of ivory liquid detergent. Famous story. He took his wife to the optometrist. Because you broke her eyeglasses. The guy said it's going to take 10 days to get them to, for the glasses to get fixed. They thought that was ridiculous. Dean goes, is she supposed to walk around blind in the meantime for 10 days? It was crazy. And the guy says, well, that's just the way it is. The guy being the optometrist, that's just how it is in the eyeglass industry. So they stormed out the guy's office. Dean took the next year or so analyzing that industry. He was no longer in the cubicle. And actually, this actually happened a few years. Well, anyway, um, but we all know the story. Because he and I, because I was working on air liquid. He was ivory liquid, you know, air liquid. Anyway. And anyway, he starts a small business called Lens Crafters. <laughs> With a brand promise of eyeglasses in an hour. Okay, you, okay, you follow me? All right, right, Jiffy Lou. Why should I have to wait all day to get my oil changed? Okay, I'll create Jiffy Lou. Oil change in 30 minutes, right? Okay. See, this is about declaring the business you're clearly in. This is how you own unclaimed space. This is about call, this is about finding what's called your blue ocean so you're not in red ocean. Because if people feel like, oh, somebody over there seems to do the same thing you do. Oh, I came across this website and they seem pretty similar. You know, people go nuts, right? They, they slot you, they put you in a box. You want to be in blue ocean to say, I'm the only person who does this. So you got to really nail that down. So, you know, I gave some of these verbally earlier, but you want to complete this sentence. I'm the only humma humma that does humma humma. Because, see, when you're me only, watch this. When you're me only, you are being looked upon as an innovator and not an imitator. Are you with me? If you're me too or me also, which means they think they can get the same thing somewhere else, they look upon you as an imitator. And the moment someone thinks you're an imitator, you are forced to compete on price or availability because you're allowing people to commoditize you. You're, you know, you're allowing people to, to label you <laughs> or perceive you as just another penguin in the group, another bird in a flock, another slice in the loaf. You're just a jar of mayo. I mean, come on. Who wants to just be a jar of mayo? So the whole thing here is to say to this person, listen, not only am I different, I'm better. I offer something that's superior because you got to have your secret sauce. 
Now, I know we've got a few people on the call today, but I'm just curious. I'm going to open the chat box real quick. I want you to answer this question, everyone. Just put this in the chat box. Let's have some fun here. I got five minutes here. Uh, what was the last brand that you bought? So I want you to just type in real quickly. I got the chat box open. Put in the brand name of anything that you bought within the last week. It could have been on Amazon. It could have been in the supermarket. It could have been in the department store. Okay, here we go. Uh, HP, uh, computer, craft. Very good. Judd said craft. Eric said HP. Anybody else out there? Nike. Excellent. Now, uh, Lenevo Sketcher. Oh, Sketcher. I like Sketcher. Sketcher shoes. Okay, now, second question. Oh, Apple. Thank you, James. Second question. Why did you choose that brand? What made you choose that brand name? You had other choices. You had other options. Write in, please, the reason why you chose that brand. Eric said it works. What else? You had other options. Don't put in their price. Loyalty, but fair enough. My favorite, they were comfortable. I love the quality. They're reliable, easy to use. Yada, yada, yada. I love it. I love it. Now, here's the deal. You want to know what each of you have in common in terms of how you answered that second question? Why did you choose that brand? One word. Write this word down. It will change the trajectory of your business in terms of how you brand market and sell what you do. One word. Because. You chose that brand over other options because. And the reasons that each of you just typed in the chat box are totally valid because your reasons matter, matter to you. They were relevant to you. And my question to each of you is, what's your because? And like I said earlier, it's not your resume. It's not. It's not your credentials. It's not your awards and your achievements and how smart you are and how skilled you are. If you have the need to want to tell people that, tell your parents. They'll be impressed. But when you're talking to prospects, all they want to know is two things. How are you different and why are you better? Your goal must be to achieve what I call brand preference. And your brand preference becomes your because statement, otherwise known as your secret sauce. Your goal must be to achieve what you see in the upper left-hand corner. And that is brand preference. Listen, it's all about brand A versus brand B. I don't cook, I'm trying, <laughs> but I'm a delivery guy. I prefer Grubhub, nothing wrong with Uber Eats, nothing wrong with DoorDash, but I prefer Grubhub. I prefer Lyft over Uber. I prefer Nike over Adidas. Some of you may prefer Coke over Pepsi and vice versa. So when you think of it strategically like that, in order for you to achieve brand preference, you have to nail down your because, which is your secret sauce, which is that special thing that you do, you, the way that you can deliver, watch this, the way that you can deliver outcomes that nobody else can, deliver value in a way that nobody else can, as a process, as a, as a system, as an approach, as a whatever, that becomes what's called your core differentiator, otherwise known as your centerpiece, the hallmark of your brand that you then scale from and build your brand and scale it around because it's the unique delivery system that allows you to deliver value that nobody else can because nobody has what's called your brand DNA. Look at this slide, asterisk this slide, write down what slide number, slide number's not appearing, where are they? Okay, 
the most successful service-based companies in this great country of ours. From Amazon to Vistaprint to Stanley Steamer anchored their success in some kind of formula, system, right? They have a because, a because of system, process, method, and et cetera, structured within a branding framework that allows them to get what's called more client buy-in, that showcases how they serve, how they lead, and how they deliver value in a way that nobody else can. There was an interview uh, once with Jeff Bezos. A lot of reasons why Amazon is what it is. And they asked him, Mr. Bezos, what's the number one reason for the success of Amazon? You know what he said? He said, because we have a secret sauce. We have a very sophisticated algorithm. That very few other that, that very few in the Amazon organization, he said, are even allowed to know what it is. Guys, remember, you're not selling a product. Don't say you offer services. That alone puts you in red ocean. That alone commoditizes you. One time I was watching a TV commercial. I'm going to show you a couple of products here, but you'll get the point. Bounty, on the TV commercial, they said, Bounty, the quicker picker up, or let the spill begin, because Bounty is, absorbs two times more liquid than any other uh, paper towel, because we have something called trap and lock technology. You follow me? So always remember, the more authentically different you are, the more you will make your brand worth saving as to potential clients. So put your focus on getting across how you, as a personal brand, are different, why you're better, as opposed to touting your services. Stop. Don't do that. And relying upon marketing, offer a secret sauce. So let me close this because I know we're going to do some Q&A here. If some of this is overwhelming to you, you're going like, yikes, holy cow, I wasn't expecting all this. I thought you were going to talk about logos. Listen, I do have a free gift. I told her I was going to give offer a free gift. So if you go to jerryfosterbranding.com forward slash captivate, I have a one hour video mini training course called Stand Out and Captivate. Oh my God, it's about seven videos, bite size nuggets that goes over a lot of this stuff and even more done live, comes with worksheets in the whole nine yards. Uh, you can grab that free of charge and uh, I'm also going to offer you a one-hour brainstorming session with me. Yes, one hour, you and I, one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom, and we're going to brainstorm, and we'll come up with some things that probably you haven't thought of in terms of how to make sure you have the strongest brand possible. And by the way, I promise no selling. I don't sell, okay? So when people come across my path, if they have an opportunity to sit with me, uh, I give, I give, I give. I'm a giver, not a taker, okay? All right, so there you have it. Thank you. Oh, oh there's one All more right. slide. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, shoot. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're Should welcome. <laughs> I'm not, don't, don't pay any attention to me right now. I'm, <laughs> I'm, oh, oh, here, here. Ah, there you this. go. Okay, there it is, right there. Contact you. Awesome. Okay. All right. Oh, that's my cell. If anybody just wants to uh, text me right now, right there, just say, give me your name and uh, I'll get you set up for the brainstorming session. Yeah, go ahead, Sakai. I'm All sorry. Right. Thank you so much for that powerful and informative talk jerry you're welcome now <laughs> let's head on to our q a portion so we encourage the audience to ask questions um actually you can also put your contact information on the, you can still share screen jerry and put put up your contact information maybe some people will oh yeah 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 i'll put it, it. In yeah okay so while um, you're preparing that, we encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on screen or using the hand raise, uh, raise hand feature here on Zoom. We would love to hear your question. Did you guys get value? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> So we have Kate Culver here saying thumbs up for that talk. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I just put my name in uh, 
Yeah, just text me. We'll schedule a brainstorming session. Which I usually charge a thousand dollars for, but I'll do it for free. Oh, thank you so much for that, Jerry. Yeah, I'll answer any questions you might have. And for your like one-on-one -on -one Zoom session, uh, how how can we uh, reach you for that? Is it just through text or through your website? Yeah, through text. Uh, that would be the best way. Through text. Yeah. We'll note that in. And some of you all may want to get to know me for no other reason. I can refer a lot of business to you. That's I heard awesome. there's some marketing people here. You may want to connect with me, bro. Okay. I'm looking for Can't good unmute. marketing people. Oh. I'm seriously, I'm going to look out for some marketing folks I can refer business to. Uh, Jeffrey, how do you judge time to commit to your brand or messaging before you think it's time to change? Jeffrey, where is Jeffrey? Where is that handsome face of yours, Jeffrey? There you go, buddy. Can you unmute yourself, please? What, what, do, you say yes, what do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I have a personal brand as well. I'm I do uh, business and or business strategy and operations consulting, um, and you know it's relatively new. But I'm just kind of wondering how you gauge time frame before you feel like you should yeah. uh, change up a potential brand messaging or brand promise if it's becoming ineffective versus continuing to grind on the same thing, hoping that it eventually catches uh, momentum. Um, so. Yeah, I was just looking to get your opinion on that. Thank there's, you. There's, there, yeah, that's a great question. Well, the obvious, there's three, there's three uh, responses to that. Number one would be the obvious, which are what are the symptoms? If your sales or profits or cash flow is less than desired, that says you need to, you need to do something different. Number two is how important is, is it for you to stay ahead of the curve? Because as you know, uh, big companies rebrand all the time. In fact, most of the work that I do, Jeffrey, is rebranding which doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. It simply means that you are reinventing, reimagining, retooling what you have so that you can have the strongest brand possible. And then the third reason for, for this is when someone feels that they want to have what's called a leadership presence. Uh, most of the people that I work with have a desire to be looked upon as being top shelf, best in class at what they do. And so if you're going to have a market uh, leadership presence, then there's a certain way you have to show up strategically to drive the visual part of your branding. Does that make sense? So really, it really comes down, Jeffrey, to me asking you, you and I had a session called, well, what do you want to achieve and who do you want to become? That makes sense? Yes, it does. I'll definitely be booking a session with you too yeah. to hopefully talk about some of this stuff. So. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah. send me a text, bro. That's right. a great question. I also, I believe uh, James uh, also has a question. Yeah, you guys can put your phone numbers in the box too if you want. So. I, I do, but I'm trying to think of what it is <laughs> because it yeah. was such a broad, you know, uh, lots of topics. And, and I was thinking, um, would, you, would you have preferred just a few tips? Tip <laughs> number one, don't do a logo. I think you also have to like in, increase your enthusiasm sometimes. <laughs> That's a joke. A very enthusiastic. So, Actually, I was trying to dial it back. I know. I get excited, <laughs> man. So what, what do you think is the most important aspect of a brand? Like what, what is it? What is the most important thing that it accomplishes? It allows you to be the honey and not the fly. Hmm. Business comes to you instead of you having to chase after it. Because you are positioning yourself as a one of a kind brand. And that's what the most successful brands do. They find that opportunity in the marketplace to put something out that's fresh, unique, and original. Now, a lot of my work is very faith-based for those of you. I don't know if some of you are spiritual people but I'm going to give you a spiritual lesson here, if I may, regardless of your beliefs. And that is, it may be time for some of you to seize the land that's already been set aside for you. That whoever God you believe in is already there. And he's waiting on you to seize it. He's already got your name on it. And what happens, James, is that a lot of people 
they they miss the opportunity. They don't see what's out there for them. Mm. And so what I do is I show people oftentimes how to make sure that they are able to put something out into the world that would not only be hard for the world to ignore, but it would be, it would make your name um, irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a true believer that we may live in the world, but we're not of the world. So why would you present yourself like others? So I do a lot of rebranding. A lot of people who come to me come to me because they they feel that they're blending in and not standing out. So it's uniqueness. That I think it's that's the most important thing. Uniqueness and distinct distinctiveness. You got to be unique and distinct. Hmm. Great, thanks. Definitely be booking. Oh like, yeah. It sounds good. I mean, you're welcome. I mean, I <laughs> I'm trying to be humble here, but that's all right. If you went on my website, they have like a hundred letters and videos. You might want to check out what people say. That's really oh. cool. Uh, oh. For the brain, uh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, James. So, what what was it like? What captivated? What? Why did you do this your whole life? Like, what 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 did you get out of it that made you like this is it? That's this amazing, is it. isn't it? The average American, I read an article, that the average American changes their job or career 10 to 15 times in a lifetime. Mm. I've never done anything but this. And this is year 38. Yeah, that's a long time. You know, I went to I went to USC, by the way. We're, you know, come on, man. We're back in the football. Come on, give us our give us our love. Uh, I majored in branding and marketing. Well, actually, I majored in marketing, deep study in branding at the Marshall School of Business. So it goes even further than that right and so i think what it is for me there's two parts to it one is i just love to help people mm. yeah because i'm a teacher mm. i love to teach i love to give um I, I i'm not a taker and i'm very clear on what my purpose is i'm very clear on why i'm here and uh how i am to serve others that God allows me to serve. So when you're walking in your purpose, when you're real clear on, on who you are and why you're here, then you are you, you, you get to be purpose-driven and not money-driven. I've never been money-driven. I'm strictly about making the difference uh, that I want to make because I'm clear on the, on the divine assignment that I've been given. This is not too spiritual for you all, is it? No. <laughs> because no. see, see, I'm talking to those of you who offer expertise because I also come from this perspective. If you are offering any kind of service, skill, talent, or ability, there is probably a noble, a noble calling on your life because you're being allowed to touch the lives of other people, which is very different than a product. Yeah. And what I found, James, is that a lot of people they're not clear on what their brand purpose is. I go to their websites. I, I see what they have on social. And they're showing up like everybody else. And there's no communication about the stand that they are and the difference they want to make in the lives of the people they're supposed to serve. So there's a no, and I'm not, when I talk about nobility, I'm talking about for all of you. And you have to brand from that place and then build out from there. Hmm. Is that uh, all right? That's, that's great. Yeah, that's really, really good. Yeah. So I appreciate that question, by the way. Thanks. Great answer. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, just so you all know, I do very, very well. <laughs> my conversation right now in my company is how do I turn my nice size six-figure business to six figures to six figures a month? That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> I'm in a seven-figure conversation. So though, by the way, for those of you who connect with me, that part of the conversation we'll have. Not a conversation about how to get to six figures. That's easy. How about how to get you to seven figures? Because it's very possible that some of you are so freaking good at what you do, but you're too close to it. 
you, you know, you can't read the label when you're inside the bottle. You can't see yourself inside the picture frame. And you may think you already have a, a brand because you've got the visual stuff. Yeah, I guess it's looking at it from the from the outside, like the clients. You know what I'm going to throw in? I'm going to throw this in. When you contact me, I'm going to throw in a brand audit. I created an assessment tool way back in 2014 that allows you to muscle test your brand. In three to five minutes, you will be able to uh, complete my assessment and we can see where you're strong, where you're weak, and what some of the missing pieces may be from a branding standpoint that could be hurting or hindering your success and you don't even freaking know it. And when people complete my assessment, I've had thousands of people go, oh my God, thank you. And you know the old adage, um, that people don't know what they don't know. I take it further than that in branding. It's not that you don't know what you don't know. The worst thing to do is to add like, you know what you don't know when it comes to branding or what you don't know is not that important. How freaking arrogant is that? And sometimes I come across folks because they're so educated and so skilled and so whatever, they think they got it all figured out. Because I was like, I may, I may not invite him back again. He did. <laughs> is this good? You guys? No. Definitely good, Jerry. And I believe uh, if- Oh, uh, thank you guys. Oh, now they're, they're giving me love. They're giving me love. Okay, yeah. I'm reading what they're saying. Oh. And does anybody else have any other questions? Who would Todd, like what to do you do, Todd? Uh, Todd intrigues me. I've been looking at this guy since he since I started. Todd, if you unmute yourself, please. What do you do? Thank you. Um, I do a couple of things, actually. Um, I'm in insurance sales. I'm a Hi. corporate insurance salesman for the past uh, 26 years or so. But I'm just on the cusp of um, buying a uh, my first small business, uh, a hair salon. And the business is positioned very well in the market. Uh -huh. um, but I do believe that the um, the branding and the marketing is definitely um, blase for sure. It, it's not it's not unique. It's not distinct. It doesn't stand out. It's just a it's just a me too. And the business has the operational bones and the staff to do very well, but it definitely needs a um, uh, it needs a new a new view for sure. And that's the main reason I'm on this call today when I got the invitation from uh, from Kasai, I'm like, this is uh, this is exactly the call I need to be on today. I'm not quite there yet as to far as as far as um, reaching you because I don't know what I really got my arms around until I get in there and look under the hood a little bit. But I do know for sure that there's nothing about the website or the marketing materials that would motivate me to pick that business over another and that that's why i'm here that is sage what he just said at the end are you let me translate that are you giving people a compelling reason to choose you over another op option option you all need to think about that what is your because yeah what is your secret sauce what is that one thing that you do a lot of this is about you asking yourself, are you in touch with your zone of genius? Which is your superpower, right? Now, let me let me define that from a brand. I'm going to throw this in for free, Zakaya. Let me, let me define that from a branding standpoint. In branding, in this whole thing about me only versus me too or me only or me also, what great brands do, especially if you're offering services, pay close attention to this, is they nail down the one thing that you do that comes easy to you that's hard for others. That perhaps only you have been given the ability to do. And that's when a lot of people, Zakaya, are not in touch with their greatness. 
what what do you what is it that you're able to pull off on behalf of your clients that few others know how to do? Have you ever asked yourself that? Mm -hmm. So that you are giving people a reason to choose you over and above what you may think it is. And then the idea is to take that and now translate that into your one of a kind delivery system. Process, method, approach, the path, pillars, whatever that word is. You guys getting this? James, you feeling this? I'm teaching. Absolutely. Right now. Very good. Okay. This is about how to really scale up to the level you want. Now, is this done without marketing? Of course not. Brand market sell, the three work together. But when some people think, oh, I just need an offer and a landing page, do beware of the shiny objects. Let me tell you that. Dude, I get all the all the horror stories on that. So, Todd, I appreciate what you said, buddy. Yeah. So I think mean, for me, I mean, I'll, I'll go one step further. And you know, like this business is all about, you know, image and vibration and personal feeling, right? So, like, you know, there's nothing on this website that speaks to that. Nothing. So again, like, you know, when when you talk about the emotion of the because, that's that's why I'm here today. I want a because. And that's why I'll call you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, please do. Please do. Yeah, now you're getting that. Yeah, I, I got it. I got it from this the guy. Yeah, this, this I got guy. it from the get-go. I got it from the get-go. <laughs> high five, high five. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. See, he's he's already thinking. He's looking for you. You guys need to write this down. What's, what's your edge? Mm -hmm. Do you know that right now, because of what's going online in this super crowded marketplace, marketplace finding your edge. Yeah, got to have it. It's one of, yeah, you got to have it. And if you don't, if you cannot, and by the way, that edge has to be something that your competition cannot duplicate, imitate, or negate. Meaning it's a sustainable edge that gives you sustainable success. And even if they could, if, if, you're, if they're not promoting it. The right way. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Because when your market, when your brain is done right, you're able to do what? Say the right things the right way to the right people. Exactly. exactly. The Kai, I'm not trying to hijack your platform. I'm talking no, too just... much. But the Kai, please forgive me. I talk a lot. I'm hyper. I know. I know. I know. I'm working on it. I told myself I was going to be a five today, not a ten. Marty, I'm. You know, I want to hear what Marty does for no other reason than I love the dude's haircut. And I saw him earlier, and I'm like. You know, he like you talk did like a salon guy, right? I mean, look at the guy. Marty, you still there? Well coiffed dude. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, so my phone number is three, I'll give it out. 310. I'm in Los Angeles, although I'm a Midwest guy. Okay. I'm born and raised in Michigan. I'm only out here because of the weather, because I and I went to SC. Seriously, I know. It's shallow, but it's true. 310-382-6539. 310-382-6539. Yeah, text me now. Send me some love. Say, Jerry, you know, fist bump, whatever. We also have one question from uh, uh, Joe Lan Chin. I hope I'm saying your name right. You can... Uh, Joe Lan? You can uh, you. Oh, Joe, he... The, you guys should all be on camera. What are you guys, bashful? Yeah. <laughs> Shows oh. your beautiful faces. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Get on mute yourself, buddy. All right, just a second. I'm getting settled. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for calling me out because I... So, uh, Jerry, love the stuff. And uh, so I, I'm... I'm kind of right in the middle of something like this with marketing. And that's why I was kind of reaching out to something like this here. Good. So I have a mechanical consulting business in California. Yeah. 
we have a team of five people. It's about five years old. And we really captured the service aspect of what we do. The quote that you mentioned, service, value, um, in, in that industry, especially in small Fresno, engineers, and I'm feeling like it's too, too, engineers means it's going to be expensive and it's going to take a lot of time. Hmm. And the one thing I really try to focus on with my team is we are in the service business and it's about service first. No matter how many letters I got at the end of my name, because I am licensed in California and Georgia and they need us. Architects generally need us. And so now I'm trying to put together a plan where I can expand that business from California to Georgia. Okay. And the challenge is trying to get to the architects because I, I really want the, 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 the one man, two man shop architects. I don't want to go after the guys that are building. So, first thing, so the, so the first thing we need to do, the first thing we want to do is um, let's muscle test you, your brand. To make okay. sure that you are giving architects comp compelling reasons to pay attention to you. Okay. Because I've worked with engineers in the past. In fact, I uh, branded a civil en civil engineering company a few years back. And engineers, I'm not saying this about you, but engineers have a, have a tendency to focus on their resume and, their, and all their skills. Hey, that's exactly when, when you said that earlier. That's exactly what it is. Here's what we do: with HVAC design, plumbing design. Uh, I'm just oh like, man, God. that's just everything, just like everybody else. And I used to uh, be a frequent speaker at AIA, American Institute of Architect. Yeah, yeah. They used to have me speak at their events. So, and they're they're another group. I mean, they they're so proud of their of their stuff, right? <laughs> they're artists. Yeah. So yeah. what they fail to recognize is that uh, in branding, there's another adage: people make buying decisions based on emotion, backed by logic. So, 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 Hulan, we got to make sure that you're not being too logical. Okay. Mm. Let, let's let's take a look at making sure that you have a heart-led brand, emotion-led brand that okay. speaks to what matters the most to them emotionally. And then we can bring in the logic, okay? Well, so. well, here's the, here's the other thing too. I feel like the business is such a relationship business. Yeah. It's, you know, it's like, if you need a mechanic, you're going to say, if you don't have your guide even using, you're going to ask, you know, somebody you trust, hey, who do you use? You know, so like, I'm like challenged in a whole new market. How do you break yeah, into you those? Be, I understand you. Yeah, I, yeah. You got to be able to say to someone, "This is for all of you." What I offer that you cannot get from others is fill in the blank. Okay. Fill in the blank. What I do differently is, or unlike in your case, unlike unlike other mechanical engineers, what I do that's different is you have to be able to quickly enable your buyer to discern that you offer something over and above other options because of mm -hmm. now because of not then they put you in red ocean right right you're just the penguin yeah, for sure right so you want you want to be me 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 uh me only versus me too right and so in order for that to happen right i mean think about brands that were me only brands that lost their relevance like bam Polaroid? Uh, the, uh, the, yeah, yeah. Polaroid. Blockbuster. A blockbuster. MySpace. <laughs> hello. Yeah. What? What? Skype? To, see, hello. Look, whoever thought that all the retail, major retail chains in America would go bankrupt because nobody saw a force of nature coming called Amazon that mm -hmm. changed the way that people shopped. So the question becomes for you is, we need to nail down what is going to give you that sustainable edge that cannot be duplicated, imitated, or negated that matters to these folks. Speaking mm -hmm. to what's in it for them. So you got to tell people what's in it for them as opposed to telling them what you do. Gotcha. All right. So text me, man. Will do. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. This is all free for me, man. I and like I said, you connect with me. I'm not gonna sell you anything. I don't <laughs> I don't sell. That's another conversation. So does anybody else have any other questions? Been doing this too long. I would like to ask Jerry. If uh, that is all, then we'd love to move on to our the last part of our event, which is our takeaways and gratitude circle. So we highly encourage your hand if you want to share any takeaways you had on this event, or if you want to give your appreciation to our speaker for today. Wow, that's nice. 
This is so nice. All right, James. Yeah, uh, Jerry, you're you're a very inspiring person, and it's 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 good to see that spark that you have. And thank you. Great that you shared it. It's really really good. Thank you. I you're appreciate. Welcome. it. Thank you. Thank you, James. Anybody else? Oh, oh so Marilla. we have Marilla. Thanks for tuning in, York. Yeah, I, I got on late. We're dealing with a lot of stuff here. Uh, medical diagnoses and things like that. But it was very refreshing to, to hear what you were saying, Jerry, because I um, I think it, it's, it's so tempting, or it's, it's, it's not tempting, it's propaganda to make us feel that we have to be on the same, all, all on the same track. For instance, I, I'm very perverse that way because I don't buy from Amazon simply because my father had a bookstore and 50 years ago, he said, don't you ever buy from Amazon because he was ruining the business. Yeah. And so I don't. And I survive. Yeah. And I think it's important for teens, which is my target market. I like to teach teens, but other people won't teach them. And uh, some of that is the perspective of the past. They're not being taught anything about prior movements. Like I, I, there's a new woman of uh, labor labor lawyer, I believe she is, a labor reporter named Kim Kelly. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's, she's very, she's got all the earrings and all the braids and stuff like that. But she's talking about the past history of the labor movement and nobody else is talking to me about that. So it's, it's very, um, thank you for, for validating us, reminding us to validate ourselves. Oh, and what do you do? Well, I, I, I was a program designer. I, I ran a, a brain injury rehab center. And oh. then the more I, I ran that, the more I realized that um, there, there was a, a need in education for, for because when I started in, in brain injury rehabilitation, the only other thing for adults was workshops where they just stood there and stuffed envelopes all day. I said, no, 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 no. We got to, we got to, you know, work on helping people learn to reason again and know what's important, um, learn how to prioritize, stuff like that. Wow. So I started teaching in the, uh, I taught in four schools in Oakland that were underfunded. And uh, we was teaching social studies, but it was all taught it, it theoretically. And so what I did was help them, you know, address service teaching. You know, how, how do you find something that like, like I got them to, um, there was one class and this is required for the high school graduations to do this kind of project, but nobody was doing this particular focus of having the students go in and uh, teach uh, labor. Like, like I'm a home care provider. So I had the home care providers arranged with a women's center here in Oakland. And we had the high school students come in and teach the Chinese workers how to use the computers because none of them knew how to do it. And by the time they left, they all knew how to, I mean, we did have two translators okay. that could guide them, but, but then the, the, the teens could help the, the home care workers, the Chinese home care workers. So let me ask you this. So, so where are you now? What are, what are you looking for? How can I support I you? I want to do podcasts. I want to okay. do podcasts with people who are cutting edge and, you know. Yeah, reach out to me. I, I have two podcasts that are very popular. Great. And working on a third, yeah. Okay, so Love very you. Just I'm a, I'm a, do you, I'm a, pro, I'm a prolific podcast. Okay, great. Jerry Foster. What is? Yeah, yeah. This. Um, see, some of you are reaching me in the chat box privately. I love it. Yeah, Liza and I, Liza and I are developing a relationship. We're sharing the love, Eliza. I know she's got a. She has a uh, uh, tea shop in Vancouver. And Eliza, I have a lot of clients in Vancouver. I, I've done a lot of business. What does Larry do? Larry Morningstar. I, I'm intrigued, but when I see a logo of an L, you know, right, Eliza? I'm like, an L. What, what is that? I say, Eliza, I mean, Kaziah. Larry. Oh, Larry, look at, oh, look at you. <laughs> I'm still here. I hey, remember God. when you were, I, I remembered where that you came to Vancouver about six, seven years ago. Yeah. Were you there? Was when fantastic. I spoke? Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, that was a live event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! You were there. Wow. Was, yeah, that yeah. was a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, Larry. What do you do? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Well, 
Well, I'm a, um, I'm a um, emissary. And so I have to position myself as a uh, raiser of consciousness, as a business developer, as an emerging leadership uh, transformational coach, and as a business builder, uh, as a business builder. Right, so, Mark, Larry, Larry, this is in love. Mm -hmm. now, there's another. There's a term in branding called grand clarity. <laughs> okay, which, that's right. That's right. Which, which means that's right. Grand, it's, it's, yeah, you know, they're known for like ah, yeah, you know, it's like Roundup kills weeds. Oh, oh they kill people now. Oh, okay, but right, it's that's like right. You're known for an idea. Yeah, we need to. So, Larry, reach out to me, bro. You need some. Okay, brand I will. We need some brand. I clarity. will. All right. You can Thank put, you. Your, put your, uh, send me a direct message. Put your uh, phone number in there. I did already. It's in the chat box? Or yeah. did you, oh, you, Or did you send me a text? Not yet, but I um, I put my number and I'll, I'll send you a text as well. Okay. Oh, there it is. I see it. Excellent session, Larry. I see it. Okay. Thanks, yeah. buddy. You bet. And, but, and we, but you know, hey, hey, it's a, it's a, because I let Marty, Marty didn't respond to me. What's, what's up with Marty? Um, Marty, are you there? Marty, you shy? Love your hair, man. <laughs> Oftentimes he turns on his camera when he's there, so maybe he's driving or oh. just listening in. So we oh. have a lot of uh, viewers sometimes who are driving and just oh. trying to listen in. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's doing good. And what about Shaheen and Kajaga? What do you all do? This is a mystery. This is like the mystery guests. <laughs> Shaheem and Kadraga. I'm always curious when someone can just stay in the shadows. So we have a question from Joe. What are your podcasts' names? One is called Big Brand Formula, and the other is called Brand Forward Leadership. Ooh. I know. Brand Forward Leadership are um, primarily interviews. Uh, with people who are up to making a difference, making a contribution in the world through their expertise. Uh, and uh, I turn down more people than I let on to that show that I interviewed. I get like 30 requests a week. Oh, look at Kadraga. Ha, huh, I'm driving. Um, oh, I'm starting a food truck in Florida. The Caribbean creamy, creamery. All right, see, I see, so, see, because I this is what happens when you just ask a simple question. Who are you? Look at that. Okay, so Kajit Kadriga, what's your phone number? Uh, but you're driving, so you reach out to me 310 382 6539. Okay, I'm gonna also, private um, message. Um, after uh, this event, we're going to send a replay, right? And we're going to put um, Jerry's contact phone number so that everyone who registered on the event can uh, contact him because uh, you'll be able to see his contact number there. And so Shaheen, what's Shaheen do? Who's Shaheen? Shaheen? He said, oh, Shaheen said you are great. Oh, this is Brian Sampson. So Kidraga is a Brian Sampson food truck guy. So He's a Brian, a Brian who? Um, Kidraga is Brian Sampson. Oh, and he linked his number as well. Okay, awesome. No, Kidraga is the uh, Caribbean creamery. Um, right, yeah, and uh, his real name is Brian Sampson, I believe. All right, Todd, I got your number, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. This is. Oh, here's Brian. Food truck guy, got it. There you go. Oh man, I'd love to talk to you about food truck. Well, that's well, that's fascinating industry. <laughs> man, you know what's that food truck wars? You remember that? <laughs> These people are like it's all about turf. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this James has been delightful. Over yeah. his number, so we can. Uh... It's a kind because I want to uh, acknowledge you because I rarely do these anymore. So, but you know, the, I just want to tell you, she reached out to me with the most heartwarming email. I couldn't say no. You Great know, it was, it was it was so from the heart, and uh, I said I'd be. I said sure, I'd love to do it. So thank you. 
No, it's our pleasure to have you here, mm -hmm. that uh, we get to hear content and subjects like this to truly impact our members. And many uh, talks like these are just uh, life changing for many, you know, we get tons of knowledge and it's free. So we really, really value the time and effort that you, you give us here, the knowledge that you share with us. Oh. And Marilla, so, I want to reach out to you too, Marilla. Make sure I get your number. Her website is Whole New Take, or you can okay. find several of them. And what's your phone number, Marilla? 548-3830. Can you put that in the, in the chat box? If yeah, you don't I can know? type that yeah. for you. Okay. Awesome. No, what you're doing here is awesome. Thanks to Iman, who re is the founder of uh, Entrepreneurs International Network. He really wants the member to enjoy oh, and benefit um, from these oh. events. And aside from education, you know, gaining your potential joint venture clients and partners, it, it's a big opportunity for everyone. It's a win-win. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Aman, Aman is a rock star. Yeah, definitely. A rock star indeed. Thank yeah. All right. Oh, thanks, I want to save the chat, um, the chat uh, messages so that you can uh, take on all the numbers, take on Jerry's number. So you can save the chat through um, the three buttons on the chat box. There's like a three dots uh, below beside the arrow like that before you hit send and then you can yeah. click on that and select save chat to save everything. Yeah. So all of you who um, I connected with, we're going to, I'll reach back. Todd, Todd's got some yeah. guns on him, man. Todd's, you know, Todd, look at Todd. Todd is, yeah. You know, I saw you, Todd. Yeah, I'll reach in James. Yeah. Gotta keep that yeah. Down. <laughs> <laughs> the stretch down there, though. Got a stretch down there. I, so I'm the skinny guy, man. I need to. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'll connect with all. Great session. Great oh session. man, thank you, man. I, I, I just, I hope I just didn't give you too much. Sometimes, no, but man, it was one time someone came up to me and said, "Jerry, just lay it on us. Let us sort it out." I never forgot that. She said, "She said, don't cheat us. Just lay it on. We'll figure it out." <laughs> That's why they have recordings, right? <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> some people like Amon. Oh, Amon. Amon says. You know, one topic, maybe two, <laughs> and then you know, points. That's it. I go overboard. I'm, I just love to give, man. Thanks for always yeah, giving. For sure. Awesome. Right, this is awesome. And let's let's acknowledge Kaziah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Thanks, Kaziah. <laughs> great. Um, no. No. Thank great, you. Great thank session. You. Yeah. All right. So once again thank you so much everyone for showing up at today's event our next event is going to be on october 10th 2023 at still the same time 9 a.m pacific and we're going to have jd leski leski on our stage for a very special maverick talk from action era so if you haven't known action era yet you will definitely find out so stay tuned for the theme of that talk and that will be announced very very soon we're gonna keep it the uh, thrilling and exciting. So uh, watch out for that. So once more, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Jerry, and we will see you on the next event. Take Thanks, care, Jerry. everyone. Have a good day. All right, All right guys. Talk to you. Bye bye. bye.